All right, let's do let's do a little VOD session. So new six star hard point. First look at it in the Challengers Elite. This is what is it? Eric Boom's team versus Paul X team. Orglis versus SJP or SGP. First off, the the timings for the breakoffs with the new patch will be just a little bit different because obviously they move the movement speed for the uh, the pistol got buffed, and now everyone has the same climbing boots mechanic in built into their boots. So anything like mantling or climbing things uh, isn't going to take as much time. It's weird because number six and number seven had to wait for nades because they naded themselves, I guess. But they should be able to beat them to time. But that's what it usually is. So spawn flip out. This, there's still a, a you know a, a parallel spawn over here. There's still a parallel spawn with number two over here. Now it's not MP4 anymore, but it's in the office. So it looks like there's still the same regular spawn system from before where it's you have a lobby uh spawn you have the back p2 spawn and now the parallel one looks like it's in office office right here like sometimes white time sometimes uh with how people are playing inside the hill based on the, the side they're at you can see these parallels happen so that's still the same they're, they're still happening here so it looks like p1 is basically still the same except for those you know the that deeper spawn there this one actually occurs right here, I'm assuming because of how uh, this Orglis team is playing it on this side of the hill. Everything does look similar though. So we'll move on to the P2. New P2 obviously is right behind blue here. So this is going to be really interesting. This It looks like a very big hill from first glance at it. Uh, but let's see how the spawns actually work. A couple of players off guard, that will not work out. So now Paul X has to kind of hang his life on the back side. And, dude, just barely. I'm assuming there's not going to be any type of back spawn just because of how close, you know, something like the spawn is, the, the default spawn is it to here. Uh, but let's see how, how it's going to work here. So number two spawns out towards stage. That was that was white time, so we got to see if that stays the same for the rest of it. It, it does stay the same. So it does look like we're in some sort of scenario where we're having... Parallel spawns deep and close here, similar to like a Karachi P3. So it's going to be basically a race to the hill from these or a race to uh, mid and trying to cut people off who are also taking the exact same route that you're taking. And then if, if you win the gunfight, you can try and break through towards this way through blue or you hold and keep that like watching them spawn and try and take routes here because if they don't come through mid they have to come through the p2 area or vice versa if they don't come through mid they have to come through uh this this outer area or they have to come through you know this water drop area or through the outer area Kills for Syndicate, tease it. Yuli trying to finish it up, and he will be the last one standing with Syndicate. So yeah, they, so we do have a closer one for the pink side, and we do have a closer one back P2, and then you have the deeper ones. So basically the same thing as Karachi P3. Spawning close. Damn, I thought Arglis put himself in a great position, especially with Paul X. You see number six here, he takes the route through mid, tries to check it to see if anything on the other side, the other team is taking the same type of route. He doesn't see anything, so he's just going to reinforce time instead. He could technically stay mid if he wanted to. But he's assuming that they're going to need help on time. <clears throat> but that, I, what I think here, you see how this, this, these guys crisscross, five and six? Like this is probably just a miscommunication based on literally not playing this map at all heading into this. Or maybe playing it once or something. Because they, they had to play this Challenger's Elite literally the day of the patch. So something like this. And now like if you play it again or you watch it back, they'll probably see this. But they'll probably just have number five reinforced time and number six just stays mid. If they were going to have someone, you know, play this this cutoff for anyone that might be spawning out going this way, it would just be number six because number five and number six cross paths here. And usually you don't want to cross paths like this, uh, but this is just because of the very few reps that these guys were able to get. So number seven, looking for this possible outer route. This is something you have to do, obviously, if they're spawning towards this the old P4 area, is you have to, you know, first look at the possible mid route. They could jump over to the plat two here, so it's not like you can just hold, you know, one angle of you. They can go through P4 up the water drop if they wanted to. They can go through the office and out the back, or they go through the office and through the like where the water is as well. 
rotation were a little bit late, but they are making this hold flawless to take the lead yep. by a lot. And that's the thing about this hard point getting pushed and pulled maybe a little bit further out from that actual palm tree room. So they get the kills, now they're on the rotation. Since the spawns work like this, where it's, it's parallels, both teams, if they die, are going to spawn with a route to new. So it's, it's like obviously the same thing here, same thing with Karachi P3. Both teams are going to be able to, you know, take routes towards P3, towards new because of their spawns. There's no like back spawn back here where... If you rotate early as this side, you know, you, you know, these guys are going to spawn in the back and have to, you know, bump off time and flood through this way. There, there's just no back spawn there. So they're just going to spawn out regardless. Further out from that actual palm tree room is that there really isn't a spawn behind the hard point that we've seen yeah. to this point. Yeah, that's what Shifts is saying. It's just Orglis saying, okay, if we know that either we're spawning pool or we're spawning down by statue. So again, you just keep saying parallels. Now they they flip sides. You know, now pink side or the pink team is is spawning towards this pool area here. White team is spawning towards old P4. Trap them and have them have to hit through security side, and it worked out absolutely flawless. Let's see how these P3 spawns work out now. So big thing to do here. Obviously, Cruz is on this insane heady right now. He's watching long for his team. Number two and number four are both watching mid. They know they spawn towards P3. I'm assuming number three is literally just going to turn around. Uh, at this P3 area and watch their left side in case, uh, you know, they go that way because that's the only other thing that needs to be picked up. Exactly. So he just goes to the hop wall and looks towards, you know, dubs and, and front pool. Orglis, instead of trying to chow this guy towards this insane heady and a possible, like, correction by number two to watch this way, which is exactly what he does, they're just going to go and try and bully out mid, I guess, now. So, tax obviously huge now with the trophy change. You got to nade these guys out of the hill, tack them out. This is a great activation. This is what we call activation in, in like pro play. Number three, he doesn't see anything. Number two and number one did see things, or sorry, number one did see something towards this curve area. So, number two adjusted. Now, number three still doesn't see anything over here. So, this gives him the opportunity to pinch through mid here. He knows that they're going to be coming through mid because he doesn't see anything, they don't see anything. He knows he has a free play here. So he's gonna take this timing to go pinch through mid. Maybe they're not watching it. They take a glance at it, but all four of them are now watching through this front door, getting funneled, and he has free shots, free reign onto these guys, DJ. That's a good play by Lunars. Now P3, there's, it looks like there's no backspawn for this either. So I was expecting there to be a lobby backspawn yesterday when we first looked at the hill, but it looks like the team that's holding the hill will still spawn um, close like this. So I'm assuming if these guys spawned out, you know, maybe deeper over here, they would spawn somewhere close around, you know, the stage. And it looks like it's it's the same thing as this old P or this other P2, where it's just, you know, parallel spawns flooding to mid or flooding to the hill. So I'm not sure how I like that right now because I don't like how it's P2 and P3 basically playing the exact same way with the spawns. Uh, but it, we'll see. It looks like at least, you know, maybe this P3 is a little bit easier to hold. But Lunar spawns up on this cut once again and he has, you know, this cut to mid for the entire team of his. So they basically just need to, you know, carry their curve and they'll have everything cut. Like, like Lunars is being a nuisance over here. This is this is the problem with just hitting through mid and curve is people can spawn up and, you know, just hold their mid stairs and hold this angle specifically to help out people on the hill. Uh, and obviously that goes to show, like, with reps and with everything, people will start to learn that. But it looks like, you know, that this SGP was just on top of the game uh, in their first, you know, actual legit rep with it. So they hold that full, and now they're going to move towards this new P4, towards the pool hill. So this just, right now, to me, just looks like it's in a very awkward spot compared to, you know, the previous pool hill. Um, in my opinion, right now, and I think this is going to be basically the way to hold and break it, just based on how it looks and how it might feel, is, you know, holding it from the pool side is probably seems like it's going to be um, the better way to hold it. Because if you can get someone in time, you know, maybe at the sofa playing super safe, uh, maybe, you know, someone at the pool watching his outer, maybe someone 
you know, below drop here watching drop in mid or maybe someone, you know, at dubs here watching mid and someone else, uh, you know, even doubled up pool watching the drop as well. I think being able to trap people trying to break out coming through outer or coming through mid spawning, you know, back over here somewhere is going to be very easy to trap them and, and hold time that way. I think it's a very awkward hold from coming this side because of the access that these guys have to pool and have access like towards mid. Uh, but, I, you know, I guess it can be held if you have someone on time and you can push out pool this way. So you have another line of defense before you get towards the hill. But I think just in general right now, you break from this front side, it's going to be really hard to get back onto the hill from, you know, spawning back somewhere over here. So let's see how Orglis plays this. It definitely looks like instead of wrapping through P3, they're, they're trying to take this, this P2 slash pool area. Lunars is playing for this though too. That's a big kill though. So... White time spawn, so it's not, you know, I don't want to take too much of it, but it looks like a back P2 spawn is where the team breaking or holding from this uh, pool side is going to spawn out. And then there's a, a back lobby spawn here too. So we kind of called that. Let's see how these other guys spawn here. So yeah, pink, pink, pink team is still spawning lobby. Uh, there's like a, a closer long spawn too. Maybe that's because of white time as well. But this is the way I think will be the way to hold it uh, from the white time or from the white side. I think having someone deeper pool maybe. Yeah, I, I think I think having the guy deeper is, is a better opportunity for him to get this trade towards this front hop wall. Rather than just holding this outer, he can kind of adjust his ways here. And it will be at least Org was there first. He does get the trade on him, so yeah, I mean it's still good. Like he's he's playing this pretty well. I like how Paul's playing it. Give him a little a little two pump right there. But he does get the kill uh, or the trade, I should say, front Tiki, and then gets the trade towards uh, the outer side. But I honestly think this front side is not that bad. I think I think see see how they get that initial kill. See how hard or like awkward it is for like number one, number three still looking mid, but they just break it from the front and can just hold it from this. I mean, he just gets beamed off that heady. Don't get me wrong. You get that kill probably nine out of ten times. White team is still getting the trades too. So that's what I'm saying. Like you keep holding from this side, I feel like it's just more beneficial. Done well, done really well. They do have like, don't get me wrong. These reinforcements are much quicker, so like you you are going to be able to get like trades on in. But if the guy pool doesn't die and stays alive like they have been in the in these past like hold attempts by the, the Orglis, I think it's just a, a blender here for the pink team. Now, initial rotation to, to, to P5. This is important for, obviously, if you're spawning P2 over here to get over towards the P5. This looks like it's going to be the, the money hill for this specific map. And obviously, if you're on old time, you don't see anyone P3, you cut towards mid because you, you know that they're going to be spawning back lobby somewhere over here and trying to take routes either through mid or through uh, curve over here kind of similar to how old p3 to p4 was but this is just even a deeper route because you have to get to the uh, like obviously you have to get to security yeah again you can see the focus for both of these two teams and the hard point swings to one team or the other so johnny good job just cuts off you one guy has actually already made it past so they're probably not going to read this because they're assuming that the one team or the other. They're assuming that it has they had the covered, but he actually takes a checkout route, a route through checkout and up towards the security. Now I don't know if they hear him or what, but I think Johnny turns around right here. Oh, he does actually see him, but it's a big kill by Eric Boom. So that because he's able to get through like this, this completely fucks up the entire Orgla setup. Because now they're on time, they have to now worry about a possible P2 spawn out, because that's I guess where P5 spawns now are. And, you know, because they were, they were spawning here, but I think look, it looks like Major Maniac is even reading this, but they also have to worry about, you know, number two, who's still playing mid side. So let's see how they, they do this. Like Major Maniac sees this, but he has to face two guys. Johnny is already in, in security. 
but they already have numbers from the pink side over here towards the office. They get the kill front side towards the stage. Now Orglist has to break through the front or through this outer part. Or the, I mean, technically they go through drop, but that's just wasting a lot of time in my opinion, especially when people are spawning through stage. So let's see. Yeah, I mean, they're just gonna, it's just gonna be a super easy hold. Being able to hold drop and being able to hold through the office Seeing them spawn up, just having to basically care for, you know, a possible outer push over here. Through the doors and through uh, water drop. You basically have everything covered. And that's just with three people. Yeah, this is, I mean, this just looks like it'll be a very, very important hold. And now, number one actually spawns out. So Cruz spawns towards this p2 rather than spawning you know where these guys were p4 here and reinforcing the hill he can now reinforce first off he probably doesn't realize that you know these other guys are still like close to the hill on his side but i think the bigger thing here is you have them now spawning curve and i think this just obviously we haven't scrimmed it yet this is just me watching this right now and how and seeing how security might develop you have someone on you know on time watching this and you have maybe someone playing old P4, you know, a corner over here, it's going to be really hard to break from the stage area. Like, if you get these back spawns and you're holding the hill and you know they're spawning over here towards curve, I think this can be the... That's going to be, like, the full money hill setup. Because now all you have to do is basically, like, again, have someone P4 watching this, have someone top of the hill watching this. You can technically have someone hit out through mid and or make sure that no one's pinching if they want to play deeper here. Just cover the pinch and then have another guy stacking through office, maybe at the lower door, making sure that they don't come through the lower door or have team shots with number two or team shots with number three at the top of the hill. That's my initial thoughts just looking at it right now. Like once they get the kills, boom, I think you, you hold the full 30 seconds. I don't think there's any way that these these guys spawning out curve side should ever break this hill. And with the time left there, they're just going to rotate anyway. Just get set up for new. That's an interesting spawn though. Number six, this must be the emergency for if, you know, you know this curve area is being blocked and if, you know, someone spawns here but is not or is leaving that spawn area. Because that's an interesting one. Yeah, so I don't know how many people are reading that. I would assume that they would just spawn deeper curve. But that's interesting. That's that's good to know that they can spawn right here, even though you have someone basically blocking this back P2 spawn and people at the stage. So you're not like technically back curve, but I guess um, I bet I guess you can spawn there. Have our first significant lead as Syndicate looked great to take the scrap time and put themselves close to 140 points. And his teammate spawns there as well, so they get a double spawn there. So back to back to P1 again. Basically same thing. You know, they're holding poolside. These guys are spawning lobby. They know they're going to be spawning lobby because of where they're at. Because they're, I mean, they're holding this P4 side, so they can't get that parallel spawn. And, you know, they're not going to be spawning P2. I think... Yeah, I mean, there's only one place for them to spawn here. Because they had the guy front P2, like... It would be insane if one of these guys like spawned in P2 or something like that, but I, I think you just the only thing that you're reading here is that they're gonna spawn back lobby. So far so good though. Again, I mean the map it's playing very differently, just kind of my initial reaction to what we had from before, where a lot of the motion on the map happened on the outsides of the map. Yep. Now yep. with these rotations and these spawns, everything has a lot of them. It's playing very So Johnny Big here, obviously. Once again, same thing as as old P1. You're going to be able to reinforce quicker here from this side and you're going to see people take like hop routes through mid so covering mid for your team like this johnny literally just says you know hold hold your mid i have all of the right side unfortunately he gets a weird timing with eric boom there but he does get two kills for the price of one does get trade out but now he knows at least one guy is at the mid stairs and somebody else is somewhere else probably 
you know, white. And that's exactly where he is. I think it's going to create, again, like you mentioned at the top of this, a very mixy affair as teams start to realize that. First 30 seconds, good here for Oracle on towards P1. Syndicate, not a lot of numbers, but utility is landing and they will clear off the hard point for a moment. Still a decent hold for Orglis. They have to be careful of their mid. You know, number three. And they will clear off the hard point for a moment. I'm surprised he doesn't chat with number one over here, but he's just worried about a possible pe a possible person wrapping through P2. The timing just isn't there yet for number five and eight though. So I would have liked him to, to chow this with number one because number one coming off spawn, in a way, he gets baited because he's like, okay, there's no guy mid-stairs because Lunar's just checked this, but he just had the weird timing for it, and Johnny gets to this position uh, before, you know, Lunar's is able to turn back around. So Cruz kind of just gets baited there, but the, the trade comes on in regardless. So rotation to P2, Orglis already, you know, staying alive towards new, making sure that they're trying to put up some type of setup here. It's a weird thing though, because it does feel like everyone for them is pushed out. So they don't have anyone in time because Paul has to care for the possible back alley route. He has to care for a possible break on in through this wide, this side. He has someone pushed out mid over here and someone pushed out P2. This just feels way too pushed out. And one guy just spawned out, you know, curve here. Right now, at this very moment, and I don't want to take this, you know, take this away from the Orgos team because this is probably literally their first legit rep or maybe, you know, second rep at all in general. But I'm just seeing how this is playing out right now. And it looks like, you know, they do get the kills towards mid. But if this guy mid dies, it was a complete break on in for the pink team. Yeah, he spawned out in a weird spot, kind of in between syndicate members. Nice turn. But they're, they're able to, you know, I mean, even though I didn't think it was great at the start, you know, they're still able to, they're still able to hold it regardless. Or maybe, I mean, maybe being pushed out like that is, you know, a way to, to actually hold it because you get the information on where they're coming from and then can adjust regardless. I just think if the guy mid died, it was kind of screwed over, but that might be the risk that you might be willing to take. So again... Same type of parallel spawns. You're spawning out P4, you're spawning out back P2. Number eight is checking this in case they had spawned out a little bit deeper and try to take a mid route. But it looks like all of them are going to go around through L here and through dark. So eight gets the information. Since uh, Johnny died, he's gonna now reinforce from blue this time. And this is a good reinforcement because they technically have to get, or have to cross his line of sight in order to get to the hill. So you have number six watching the back here. You have number five watching, you know, the close right or close, you know, dark area. And then number eight is going to be able to cut off reinforcements that way too, Eric towards Cruz the hill. Clears off the contestant on the hard point itself, and now Major Radix a little bit of trouble. To but this is a good coordinated break by by Pink by SGP. They have two guys hit out the backside. This is a really awkward situation for Major Radix because he can't get a good line of sight without getting, you know, shots down on him. You know, that's a good double chow. This is this is a great teamwork by the SGB team. They both double chow this. Major Manic has to get back down. He can't, like, jump on these sofas and get a good angle. And then they, they're able to kill him. They're able to kill Paul X over here. And Yuli actually gets a kill here, but I thought he was going to get instantly traded out. I'm not going to lie. Can't quite find him. The regen this is a big kill on, on this old time, but I want to I want to show you guys the, the mid fights right after this. So who, who ends up winning this? So Yuli actually does end up winning this. He he killed, gets three for that piece, and that was the important part of him playing through mid here because he he just reinforces the time through mid, gets a different angle on it, and he, he is able to clutch this little scenario over here. But the big thing here I want to talk about are these mid fights. So number four spawning out towards uh, double and these guys spawning out right behind stage. They're, these are such big fights because both both teams obviously want to reinforce the hill. But also both teams know that they're they're spawning out parallel to these other, you know, these enemies. So even number one is going to try and, and, and hit this out too. Number seven takes instead of, you know, going through mid to try and help out this. He just realizes that like. He needs to rotate for his team because if they lose this off old, he needs to be there in case, you know, there's, there's a gunfight at new because they, they're losing right now. They need to make sure they play a little bit ahead.
the devil can't quite find so he's gonna trust his teammates to get those kills number one gets the the trays on in number six spawns up p4 he's gonna back up johnny over here towards the curve area so johnny rotates good job on johnny he rotates gets the kill for it now he can get pushed up towards long if he wants to opens up some space for the rest of his team that's the biggest thing that what uh what johnny did there he gets the kill on the rotation now he can get pushed up he buys some time and buys some space for you know number six if number six wanted to go towards white and and look towards old p3 number five obviously is going to go and look mid similar to you know the previous gunfights before in case number two had gone mid and try to take her out there to try and basically trade out for number one's kill you know he's looking for that so they're, they're kind of covering all their bases there number eight still off old has to soak this time obviously that's a big two piece by eric boom so what was a a big a big kill and some space taken by johnny by him getting one here it's unfortunate because number six doesn't get the instant initial trade they get two piece for it and now pink has a more ideal rotation so what was an ideal rotation for Orglis is now an ideal rotation for SCP with one, you know, two-piece. SCP breaks on in. Number four wraps around through long and they can now play the lobby desk. They have all of their curve now. He backs number six down. No, Major Maniac cannot chow this. Now the reinforcements are here to at least keep it small. X. He's the sole man here. He's only able to lead right on back for Orblis. One spawned out too. He he's the one who's who's gonna end up killing Paul X on time here. But look at what he does. He looks he looks towards his U first off. Make sure that he's not in the gunfight right away. He doesn't see a gunfight right away, so he just instantly chows time. He dies to number seven here. I'm surprised number three doesn't go for this this initial trade. But he's looking for this guy off old. So he's assuming that this, this guy off old, number eight, went, was going to go through blue and hit out mid this way. So he's paranoid about that. But this guy went through old P4. So in my opinion, like, you kind of have to look for the initial threat, which is number seven, and try and trade him out because he's not on time yet. So he, he has to be here towards DJ. So I feel like you have to, you have to chow that for, you have to get this engagement first. Because now he's stuck. He was watching that. It didn't, guy didn't come. And now... That buys a little bit of time for the guy to actually come this way instead of off old, you know, to come through mid and you. And this guy's already on time. And he still hasn't chowed this out. They still haven't hit this guy out. So now they do. And now the cruise missile comes in. I just felt like the thing that he just did over there could have been done quicker. And I, I, I hate to like nitpick because. This is obviously probably like their legit first or second time playing this. But yeah, this is just what I'm saying is probably like the way to play it from just looking at it for the first time. So this is kind of just a give, giving guidance to anyone that might be playing six star for the first time with a team or whatever. And just realizing, you know, what you might need to do because of how these spawns work. But I, again, I don't want to be like, oh, he made, he, he fucked up here. He made a bad play. It's like, dude, he's literally playing this for like the second time, you know? So now numbers, decent for Orglis, but they can't quite find a way to challenge as of yet. Cruz denies Yuli's initial. And now Pink is holding this. They know that they're spawning towards, you know, stage over here. So all they can do is either go through mid, which number three and number two are picking up. They can go through curve, which number one is picking up and number three is picking up. Or they can go and take a longer route through long and number four is actually going to pick that up too. So Pink is playing this hold well. They're they're covering everything that they need to cover. There wasn't really a follow up behind that. That was just kind of Yuli by himself. And so now Syndicate are fully reinforced. Kill that. That was just kind of Yuli. Those are big kills though. So, so number six looks for this possible long pinch. That's a huge. That's a huge kill here. And then also eight Yuli who spawned out old P4 has an angle on number two here. So this is not the greatest angle because obviously he wants to be able to turn and help people coming out of curve this way but he's opening himself up for possible spawners just to like literally not even have to get inside you before they can get the kill so he's not even inside you he can still see him though because of the angle so that's a break on in for a white team and that's a good 30 and now you he pushes down mid steps pushes out this spawn in case they spawn front p2 two of them did but now they get split spawns but he knows 
that at least one of them was going to spawn there and can look for the second. He sees the second. But these guys have to be worried. Like, these guys on hill have to be worried about these guys now spawning stage in P4. So that's what number seven is doing. He's caring for the possible, you know, curve pinch through. He gets one, gets two. That's huge, huge kills by Johnny. And guess what we say here right now? Emergency spawn. Emergency spawn. Instead of spawning, you know, close uh, P2 over here, or sorry, instead of spawning close new P4 or close old P or old P2, now you're you're getting these this emergency spawn inside blue. So rather than spawning on one of these edges, parallel spawns, everything's being blocked right now because I guess you know with these guys dying over here, they were blocking both of these spawns, and number two over here, he's blocking both of these spawns with this position here. I, I'm guessing they just spawn out. Uh, emergency spawn inside blue. So, really interesting to note. Funny because Syndicate are now put in a position to where you have to hit that rotation over towards P4, but you see the spawn, they're spawning over towards Statue side. You have to haul last right through the middle of the map. Everyone trying to conga line their way down through the statue. So, SGP breaking through because they spawn like on the other side, they're breaking through mid. They want to be able to hold from this pull side too. I think that's what everyone's going to be going for. That's an insane spawn by number five, by the way. Look at these spawns. Number one is taking a route. I'm guessing because... Actually, I have no idea. This is obviously new to me as well. So, number two is on time. Number one is taking a route through P2 to try and guarantee, you know, these P2 spawns or back P2 spawns for pink. But five actually spawns here. And then... I don't know how it's, this is not blocking this, this spawn. If I'm number one, I'm confused. I'm very confused. And then his teammate spawns back lobby, who spawns behind, you know, the seven player. So this, this doesn't necessarily make sense to me. Maybe I haven't seen it as much, but yeah, Paul, Paul's actually in the chat. Paul's number five here. His eyes light up when he sees uh, this guy P2 here. This is insane. Well, I mean, Paul, all he has to do is look left. He gets the kill for free. Unfortunately, his, his teammate dies, but again, with how number seven is playing this, because he gets the information from number one where he spawned, he can now like play an area inside old P3 to cut off anyone that might be going through this top P3 bar or old P3 bar, I should say. So I think this is going to be a break for Orglis and a hold from the front side. Just how it was, just how it was in like that first one. I think holding from the front side is going to be so key. This is a great cutoffs by Johnny. Like he, he gets one, gets straight out, but he gets the information that first, obviously, there's another guy towards this, this old uh, P3 and, and long area, and that they're going to be spawning back lobby because of where they're spawning here. They can hold this from the front easily. I want to see how, how Orglis plays this. Unfortunately, Paul X dies to a trophy. You know, trophy two ticks, but you can still die to it. So, you know, everyone loves trophies. That's very unfortunate. If Paul doesn't die to a trophy here, I think they just hold oh, no. this fully. Deal with the trophy systems. Now Yuli has to worry about both his his outer and you know his inner here. Day, Eric Boom gets kill. That's very unfortunate. Tally a kill. So Syndicate get a little bit blocked. But it's still it's it's so awkward in my opinion to hold from this 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 old P3 side because you know obviously you can have someone mid here watching dub. You can have people on time, but you can't really hide from from much like you're just going to get tacked out from people coming out th through the pool and the pool guys are going to be in situations where they can they can gun people out of hill pretty easily unless you're playing the sofa and if you're playing the, the close sofa you don't really have anything for your team here if they're spawning back b2 and now all of a sudden they're right back into the hard point this is a tough approach from orglis you thought that fighting inside the pool was tough try swimming across it so a couple of the trades are in but so i mean sgp does end up holding this, this is i think in my opinion just looking at it it feels like it should be favorable so syndicate get a little bit blessed and now all of a sudden they're right back into the heart so syndicate like they're hitting their stuns but i don't i don't know if anyone's hitting their nades right back into the hard point this is a tough approach from Orglis. You thought that fighting inside the pool was tough? Yuli hits his nade. But this Lunar guy, Lunar's staying alive towards long is, is really, really important. And then Gunsy, obviously he was mid and he can now reinforce the time and, and help out. Paul hits his nade there. You see, I'm thinking this is just, it's going to be tack nade city here. 
a late nade from Paul X keeps it neutral for now. This is so damn messy, Alex. I cannot keep up it's with chaos. this. Like, it, that that hill is just in such an awkward position, in my opinion, that it's just it's so chaotic. You're gonna be seeing nade spam, tax spam, especially with two two trophies there. Seconds here at P4, off the rotation to P5. Orglis should be properly set up. You already have players towards the top side of office. One player roaming through the bottom. Cruz doesn't get a kill, so now they have to watch their blue in case this guy hits it out because they know he's here. The great, I think this is great plays by Orglis. Paul is already. Low P4, watching the stage, he gets a kill for it. They already have a guy t on time. They're, they're trying to set up for what I was talking about before. Trying to make them spawn towards this curve. Hold P1, or hold P5, sorry. Hold the old P4 time. Jesus, not hold P4 time. Hold the new P5. Hold inside old P4. Make sure you're watching your back and maybe have someone pinch through mid. That's a, that's a big gunfight with number seven here. So he dies there, unfortunate, but now they have to worry about their mid and their back. So number six is going to help out number eight through the back here. And and Paul has to help this out too. Number seven, actually, wow, this is, this is I guess, the emergency spawn. You know what this reminds me of? Chat, what does this remind you of? A spawn in this game, what does this remind you of if you have someone, you know, curve here and people hitting around the back? I'll give the chat like a minute or two to think about this. Because this is a specific spawn that I'm thinking of right now. Cosmic got the map. Exactly. Rio P2. This is this reminds me of the boxes spawn. Exactly, John Gotti. This is this is boxes spawn V2, in my opinion. I don't know how common this is gonna be. I think this is more so a white time thing, but this look this looks legit just like real boxes. Because you spawn here, you know someone spawned out curve, and you know they're hitting the back. Come on, chat. We're learning. Let's go, chat. We know our stuff. I think that was more so a white time thing, but we'll see. We'll see if it happens more. Because I've only, you know, from that first hill and this hill, I've only seen the curve and the back P2 one. And actually, obviously, the, the, the old time, whatever, regular default spawn one. It is very common. Interesting. Maybe he can catch one off guard if Yuli shows himself, but instead, mm. Cruz. It happened again. One off guard if Yuli shows himself, but this is crazy though. You could just play the stage. Cruz you could just head glitch the stage. To the jump and find Paul completely off guard. Now the second gun. Oh. Now they break back on in. Because they have the numbers there, this is good. Now you have them all spawning curve. I think you just full hold this. I love, I love this. If you go mid here, yeah, yeah, you have, you have Yuli go mid here. You have, you guys, these guys just stay, stay together on time. Paul can either like fill in the the water drop or he can full time whatever he wants to do. But I think sending a guy mid here is key. Mate, you're by sending a guy mid, you're not only guaranteeing that they they can't pitch without info. But they're all, you're also you're guaranteeing a possible pinch, so they have to worry about it. It's kind of like a double-edged sword for the pink team, because like first, if you don't hit it out, they could hit it out, and if you do hit it out, you're getting caught. You know what I'm saying? Orglis, over the Paul, Paul is looking for it just in case uh, that one of them spawned and uh, and spawned back P2 while he left it, which I I don't mind because it's like you just gotta keep your bases. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to hold your bases, make sure that everyone spawned in the same spot. The good pitch by Yuli. That's 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 a huge pinch. You get active, he gets a three piece for it. Rewarded for a good play. Now he's pushed out stage. They don't see anyone curve or you yet, so they're they're probably in a second turn. I think number six already sees and is in gunfight with people back P two. And now now Paul will like turn, obviously. This is great. I think they're they're playing this really well. Final 12 potentially going to go in favor of Orglis, but if you are a syndicate, this is a good time to contest it because you know we're going over yeah, towards the middle yeah. of the map where P1 can be mixy. Now you get a, your high horse towards P1. Like, who is it? Major Maniac dies off old, but it's not that bad because you're already getting set for P1 and you have bodies towards it. Like, Major Maniac is going to spawn up and now get this, this cut for his team. He can watch all of, like, he can hold all of this right side for his team. Like number eight can now push up too, because he doesn't have to watch you anymore. Number six has that, the of the map. or he's gonna go back to time. He can do that too. A late date from Gunzy does number seven picks up you. That's huge. Further. Number seven or number six is looking at his back just in case, but 
I don't know if he thinks they spawn out. Maybe because of Paul spawn. Yeah, Paul does spawn weird. I mean, I guess uh, sometimes you spawn default, sometimes you do spawn P3, so it's not so weird. But that's probably what they're they're thinking of. Just a possible lobby spawn, but these guys are spawning all P2 now. Big kill by Major, they should just win it right here. Now you just reinforce the hill. That's a good job. Good job by Orglis. Honestly, that was interesting to actually look at a, a competitive map, map with it. It'll be interesting how things get played on 6-star with the new like hills and new sets. Or, like, yeah, new setups and stuff. And new spawns, obviously. Um, but, I, I mean, the only thing I really don't like right now is, first, I don't like how awkward P4 is. I feel like it's such an awkward position. And the other thing I don't like is how P2 and P3 have the same, basically the same spawn system. Where it's just... Close parallel, long parallel, either flood two time or flood through mid. It's it's cross EP3, but it's back to back. And it's the same thing on both hills. So it's like the same hill, but on different sides of the map. That's the only thing right now that I don't like. Those those three things. P4 being awkward, P2 and P3 being the same. And P5, I don't know. P5 feels like it's going to be a, a really big money hill. That's the, that's the third thing I was going to say.